Hi, I'm Pamela and welcome back to Longevity Gardens and I'm going to give you guys a full tour today of the garden. It's been about a year since I've given a full tour and a lot has changed. I've taken some things out, I've put new things in, you know, and I get two very popular emails always to me. The first one is, are the Murga seeds ready? <laughs> And the second one is, when are you going to do a full tour of the garden again? So uh, I'm going to do that for you guys today. Uh, this time I'm going to start in the back and uh, show you kind of the new things that I'm really excited about that I've put in. Uh, I'm also starting some uh, Moringa seedlings for some people that wanted me to start them and grow them and ship them to them as like a two foot tall tree. So I'm going to be doing that and if I have any of those left over, uh, I will definitely offer them to you and they should be ready almost about the same time uh, the seeds are ready. So there's that and um, let's, just, let's just get right into it. I'm going to start at the back and then go to the front this time. But um, I'm also going to put the links in the description below for last year's video. So I really suggest you guys look at that one so you can see the difference. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, and there's Venus. Hi, Venus. <laughs> Let's go see what's going on in the yard. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start this tour at the back of the yard here, um, looking out. Uh, it's really filled in a lot more um, this year compared to last, but this is where we're gonna start. And, and there's Venus just uh, chilling out. So, okay, let's get started. Um, this very, very back of the yard, in the corner is one of the hottest spots in the yard. So everything back here are things that can really tolerate uh, our summer heat. And back here I have one of the very first trees that got planted in this yard, uh, a fig tree. And this year the harvest is awesome. Um, I basically have more figs on this tree than I do leaves. Um, and if oh, the sun is kind of up there, let me go through here and look at it from a different angle, if I can. I, I let it get really crowded, so here we go. Oh, it's all the way back here. There we go, so we can look up at it. Um, lots and lots of uh, figs this year, you can kind of see. Like, there really are more figs than leaves. Um, and I get that by really feeding the trees well. Um, I fed them probably an unreasonable amount uh, this year, and I'll put all the links in the description below if you want to um, use the same products that I do to feed my trees to get um, them just absolutely packed with huge amounts of fruit. So let's, uh, let's continue here. This is the first fig and this, this bush right here, this is a pomegranate um, and this is in its second year. So it's almost as high as the brick wall. And so it didn't have any pomegranates last year. So it's a, uh, Got pomegranates on it this year and I believe this is a palm wonderful I believe um, I always forget the variety so it's kind of heavy and now it's hanging on the ground now I've got quite a few of these um, some desert bushes this is um, a willow tree I believe um, they do the heat really well here now this guy let me stand back here so you, I have to stand back now so you guys can look at the trees because they've gotten so big this is a contorted Chinese date, um, like, you know, those jujubes. So um, it was it was just in a one gallon pot when I put it in the ground uh, four years ago, I think it's four years old now. And just look at it. And remember, this guy is in the hottest spot in the yard. And once again, let's get in here. It's loaded. Um, I kind of OD'd on these last year. There were so many of them. So they're they're green right now but they will turn uh, brown and squishy and it tastes like um, like toffee. Do you remember like those toffee bars that we used to have when we were kids? It tastes like that. So, and the thing about this tree, like uh, I can zoom in on all the fruit, um, it's got contor it's contorted branches. So they kind of notch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's hard to see because there's so much foliage, but this tree all of a sudden started putting off volunteers. So if I go back here like that, you see that right there? That's just a volunteer um, that it's producing. And I think I've got like 10 of them, like at the bottom here, one, two. This little guy here is another uh, contorted jujube volunteer. 
And if I go around here, there's another one. There's some back there, and there. So yeah, they they're putting up volunteers everywhere. So I don't. I'm just letting them go for now. But maybe I'll I'll sell them or give them away. So a little fig here. Now this is another DGB, and this guy. Um, these guys are a bit bigger. Again, I, I apologize the varieties. I'd have to look at all the tags to remember all the varieties. But these kind of taste like green apples right now. But if you let them mature on the tree and dehydrate them, they'll again taste like toffee. So, and let's move on to, to this guy. This was the very first date palm that was put in the yard. Um, it was very small. It was only a couple, it only had a couple fronds on it when it was put in the ground. And I want to say that that was four years ago. And it did get moved, so every time it, get moved, it gets moved uh, from one place in the yard to the other, um, it'll go into shock for a few months and it'll stun its growth. So it's not the biggest one in the yard right now, but this is a, this is a Chinese, uh, no, this is um, China Ranch Gold, sorry. China Ranch Gold. And even though um, it's not the biggest one I have in my yard, yet being the first, I went around and counted, and it has got, I think, eight pups on it at the bottom so I'm gonna really start propagating um, all the pups from this guy this is gonna be one of the first ones that um, I propagate the, pu the pups for so like this and I have to really stand back now with the camera just to get you know the full view of it and Venus just might tag along with us on this tour um, okay so I don't know which way we should go uh, when we're looking out into the yard, but I do, in case I don't make it back to this um, end, <laughs> at the end of the tour here, let me just uh, showcase a couple things that I have uh, back here. Um, my cactus garden is just a little overcrowded now. <laughs> have to thin this guy out. Um, this was my very first pomegranate that got put in, and I do get hundreds every year. So these guys, as big as they look right now, they're not ready. They won't be ready for quite a few more months. Um, and it just kind of weighs the tree down right now. And I'm gonna try, ah, they do stab you. So let's, I just wanna show you how many I do have on this tree and how big this tree is. Sorry, I can't really like stand back very well because it's just a little crowded now. But I do wanna show you this cactus fruit that I have growing here in the very, very back. Um, and I'm, I am gonna get quite a bit of fruit off of this. Uh, this next year so this is where it originates and it comes up and so they have to grow up and then kind of hang down and the fruit will start forming on the bottom there because they they need to go up and down to start bearing fruit so yeah so this is the very first pomegranate and uh, yeah I've got to do some some tree trimming here these guys are getting a little too big and crowding out the whole yard so I just wanted to show you um, this pomegranate in case I don't make it back to to this very corner of the yard here. Sorry, and I'm gonna try and go through here. Okay, let's move on. Um, I just finished trimming this tree last week and I really went nuts uh, with my trimming. Uh, this is um, one of my favorite trees in the yard and the best tasting fruit and everyone can guess that yes, it's a mulberry. <laughs> and it, it, it was huge. I mean, I trimmed probably a third of this tree just last week and if we go in here like I thought I had trimmed it too much and I'm like oh what did I what did I do I destroyed it but look you know once you trim a tree like these guys grow so well here in the heat they absolutely love a hundred degree weather and even and it has been a hundred and even ten last week and still it's putting off it's putting off new growth you feed it you foliar feed it and it just springs right back up so you know, so it, it looked like cousin it before, and I just and I just trimmed the crap out of it. So, um, and right beside there, you can see I'm gonna back up here how much um, larger the date palms are. I mean, they're almost towering. Um, it's almost like one of the tallest palms in the yard now. So, um, if I can try to remember, this one right in front here is uh, the China Ranch Black. I have another China Ranch Gold beside that, and behind that I have the Sphinx. And now these guys all started putting off flowers uh, this year to get dates, um, but I'm not pollinating them or, um, 
you know, going to try and propagate the dates this year because um, the trees are still, you know, these palms are still quite young and they're putting off a lot of pups and I do want to propagate the pups. So I am not pollinating and uh, them this year to get a lot of dates. So I'm just letting, I'm just kind of letting them go, but I'm going to try and zoom in on some of the flowers that it did put off. If I can get in here. Um, yeah, these guys stab you. My, my vegetable garden only, I, I, I let the kale still grow there, but I did see a flower here the other day that is opening. But again, I'm not, I'm not proper getting them. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not a really good example, but oh, sorry. I just got stabbed again by these guys. Hang on. Let me go around here. Okay. So sorry. I had to get out of there. <laughs> Um, so let's uh, let me back up here so you guys can kind of see uh, where I am here in uh, the yard because I do not want to miss some of the things here that um, I'm also growing. So this guy right here, this is a Bismarck palm, a uh, silver palm tree from like Madagascar. And this guy has only been in the ground, um, I think a week, maybe two weeks. Um, and this is like, as you can see, and you're going to be able to really notice as we go through the tour, this is the last like large empty area of the yard. It's um, like you need feng shui. So you don't, I don't want to look like a tree hoarder, even though when you look at my yard, it does look like that. But this was the last large spot in my yard. So I put something in here that I really wanted just because I absolutely love the look of a Bismarck uh, silver palm. Uh, this guy was in a greenhouse all winter so it looks kind of green right now but as it sits in the sun it'll get more and more silver probably looking or it might stay green you know some of them all they're all just a little bit different but anyway just put this guy in he won't give me any food to eat he's just gonna be uh, a feature in the yard that's gonna make uh, the yard look just beautiful as a whole so it's always good okay and right beside that we have the pakistan mulberry again you know you're going to see this as like a theme in the yard these pakistan mulberries are my favorite so this guy is in its second year i i planted him as a bare root uh last year and this is how much it's grown and it's probably going to put on maybe probably three more feet this summer um before uh before it's done growing for the season so they get very big very fast and they can take 110 degrees all day long. Um, if we get in close here, you can see all the new uh, growth that is putting off uh, in over 100 degree weather uh, on a west facing uh, front of my yard next to my house. So that, that should tell you that if you have a very hot, hot spot in your yard, you want a good tasting fruit tree, you want something that grows well, that goes dormant um, half of the year so you know the heat can get to your house to heat it, this is definitely one of the trees that you want to plant and the second one and my most famous and advocated one and we'll move in here is of course the moringa <laughs> so uh, one of the moringas next to my house here and you can see all the paws that are being put out some of them some of them are quite large i mean they're going to get to a few feet um i had one that was almost two feet long so let's get in here and Everyone's been waiting for the seeds and they're coming. I mean, let me see if I can show you how, how big some of these guys are. Can you see that? <laughs> um, lots of pods. Um, I, I let all the pods mature and I'll show you some of the Moringa that I also have in the front. Um, the foliage is starting to get a little thin right now on it because it's putting off so many, you know, so many pods. But um, I, again, you know, I don't sell these seeds from previous years. Uh, I don't sell your old seeds so when you buy some of the moringa seeds from me you're gonna get that year's crop so when I sell out I sell out and uh, but this year you know I think I'm I think I'm gonna have a lot so the moringas um, I have a lot of uh, other uh, YouTube videos on moringa so I won't go into detail about that one but it's definitely one of my favorites and right next to it is another uh, one of the best nut trees here to grow in the desert. This is a pecan and it's got some good growth on it and I do have some, if I can find some. It's still a fairly young tree and I am getting some pecans like right here. I'll show you what they look like when they're young. Right there, that's going to be the nut. Um, they're a slow growing tree but again they take the weather all day long. Sorry I've, I still have like hoses running around my, my yard. <laughs> so 
And then we have the carob right next to that. Uh, again, I have to stand back now just to show you how big it's gotten. Um, it's going to be a, a huge, huge tree. This tree is going to be bigger than my house. So, and it's put off. It's just went through a growth spurt, so it's it's probably put off uh, like two feet of growth from 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 its branches. And I've already trimmed it once, so. Um, it needs to be quite mature to start before it starts putting off its flowers. I do see the flowers coming out, but um, I haven't gotten a pod yet, so one more year. And even though as big as, as big as this tree is, I still have to wait for it to mature a little bit more. So, um, what direction should we go? Let's go just straight through here. Um, under the canopy here, you can see how really how full the yard is. Um, I'm always growing things, so I have seedlings kind of scattered around. Uh, this guy right here, very big uh, bushy tree. This is a cherry, the Barbados cherry. And these are the flowers. Now, they gave off uh, a really big crop already. Oh, here's one that's still almost ready. That's the cherry. They will put off cherries and flowers all summer long. So, and they're sour. Some, some people really like the sour taste of these cherries they're not like super sweet um, but again this this tree does or sorry this bush I, can, I, I don't think I can call it a tree um, it does amazing in our hot summer um, weather here in the Phoenix area so and this is a good this is a better example this uh, date palm this is a good example of um, it put off its flowers but I didn't pollinate it I didn't get any male pollen and wrap it so it hang on it hung on to like a few uh, a few dates on it so I probably will be able to taste the variety and enjoy it a little bit this year but again it's really not that big of a palm it's still fairly young and it's the first year that it put off flowers so I am not gonna pollinate them that'll be that'll be next year I'm gonna have to wait and if I get in here we can kind of see the the koi fish from the pond uh, the pond is always looking really good right there and it's yeah again it's, it's really full back there so but we'll get to that we'll work our way around the yard here so let's move on <sighs> it's gonna start getting hot here really soon okay so another um, Pakistan uh, mulberry I want to show you guys going back here just you know how pretty different areas of the yard look and um, these are growing out of my uh, my river I forget the name of these guys right now but they're they're so big I, I went to Kauai one year and um, these guys can get like four feet across in a tropical area but you know we're in the desert here but you can see just how big some of them uh, do get here so and I've got you know the cattails here too which are just beautiful and the diversity back here is really is really nice so let me back up so I can move on with the tour here I'm backing up backing up don't want to run into anything so Okay, and I really just have to stand back now. I can't even show you this full tree that we, oh, this tree. Oh, we gotta talk about this. Uh, if you guys remember last year's tour uh, that I gave showcasing this tree, uh, it almost died the first winter. It froze and completely died back that very first winter. It went into the ground, but there was this tiny little branch at the bottom that grew out and the tree grew and year after year it started engulfing the old part of the tree that died back and I want to show you guys how much is um, how much is left of the original and it's like swallowing it so if you go back to last year's tour that I gave look from year on year um, you know the difference and how much the tree has grown so I'm thinking one more year and I won't be able to see the original um, the original tree anymore because it's completely um, it's completely swallowed it so and I liked it because this is this is the most beautiful majestic tree this is a this is a china berry and see there were all the china berry uh, flowers and, and buds you can't eat this one but um, it is just such a beautiful tree I mean standing under this tree it provides so much shade and a microclimate under here it's just amazing so Again, let me stand way back here. The date palms from uh, from this angle, they're just, they've gotten so big and all the other trees have gotten so big, it's really hard to, you know, to see everything as a whole anymore, but let's move on. Um, we'll go around this way along the river. Um, one of my young lemon trees, uh, the pomelo. 
pomelos do really good here. Um, and it's a young tree, but I do have I do have a pomelo on here. This is its size right now. Um, these guys get really, really big, like like four times the size of a grapefruit. So that guy is really young right now. So I won't have him until uh, Christmas. So the uh, I and mean, I think I only have one, but sometimes they pop up. It's still a young tree, so this tree will get you know is to be a big citrus tree. So I'll have a lot of pomelo. Um, Yes, the, the famous Black Sphinx, my favorite um, date palm in the yard, is right here. Um, we have, I have a couple of olive trees, more date palms, always, always. Um, more, some mulberry. I'm just going to kind of go through, uh, you know, this area kind of fast because a, a lot of the things I have, like two of everything. I used to have a chicken coop back here and I have a surprise about what I'm going to do with this area now that is coming <laughs> um but going through the very back of uh, the yard here next to the date palms and more mulberries um oh I, I do have a moringa back here uh i had planted this moringa long ago to give this area a microclimate so everything can grow um in the phoenix heat uh because <laughs> because it got so hot in this area but as you can see uh, I don't need that moringa anymore. The moringa has a hard time growing now. It's so shaded in this area. So, <laughs> yeah, so I can probably take that moringa out now. So, let's, uh, this is um, another day palm that has got a couple pups on it, but not too much. Like when I put these guys in, they, they didn't clear the, black, the, the brick wall. But now you can just see how, how much they are now. And... Oh god, so it's very crowded through here and I'm gonna, sorry, my camera work isn't that great right now because I can't get through here next to these palms that are gonna stab me, but let me back all the way up here, the area that I just went through. So yeah, so there's a heavy microclimate back there now. I, I do have to do a lot of trimming now actually to let the light in because, you know, I have this huge mesquite tree um, here that needs a lot of trimming um, for some of these. Um, this guy right here, uh, this is a, a blood orange, and I, I did get some blood oranges um, off this guy this uh, this year. It's um, it's in a, such a shaded area actually, so it, it's uh, it's growing very slow just because um, it's not getting enough sunlight. And I like I said, like all these trees are gonna get trimmed um, this year. Got a brand new chainsaw and everything, so I'm gonna get to work. Uh, but yeah, like you can see, like there, like there's, there are blood oranges on it. So there's that. So we're gonna go into um, around the waterfall. So, but I do want to show you what you know the yard looks like. Um, this is the very back of the yard. So I'm against the. Um, I'm at the very very back of the property, looking out, and you can't you can't even see my house anymore. You used to be able to. <laughs> there used to be nothing here. <laughs> now I can't even see my house or my pool or anything. I can't see anything from back here. It's gotten so full. So. Um, a couple other, um, oh, so pretty back here, um, in the mornings. So it's just a, a huge variety of fruit. This, this, this tour would end up being, you know, five hours long if I, if I went through everything. So we're just going to cover some of the, my, some of my, um, favorites here. Check that out. So much guava. Um, I forget which variety is which, you know, it's always, it's losing leaves. It's putting off new growth always, but I've got hundreds and hundreds of guava because I have about five guava trees and yeah they're doing very well and uh, this is the first year I think that I'm going to be having more guava than I know what to do with here. <laughs> um, I planted something new um, in this spot. Um, I forget where I got this guy from. A plumeria. So it was a gift I think. I believe it was a gift. And I haven't gotten a flower yet, so I don't know what color it is. So uh, it just uh, it just came back out of its dormancy here. So this will be the first year that I see what goes on with that guy. So oh my big big mesquite tree. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to, uh, to the back of the property here. Um, this guy is still he's still with me. He almost um, actually died in the winter. This is a lemon zest mango. Um, you can grow mangoes here in the desert. Um, it is difficult though, so be prepared for a challenge if you want to try and grow some mangoes. Haven't gotten a mango yet, but 
it's still a healthy tree um, if, despite it dying back a lot this winter. Okay, moving on, we have the ice cream bean. I do have some tropicals still, and this guy does have a very distinctive look of leaves, and it's still really pretty. I don't know if I'm going to get an ice cream bean out of you, but you're still going strong, and I have a couple of you guys, so let's see. Uh, all the guavas at the back of the property. Uh, this is something new that I planted just about two weeks ago. Um, I wanted to add some different features to my yard, and this is um, a specialty bamboo. It's very young. Um, it's like a Buddha belly with some stripes in it. I'll have to look up the exact variety. Um, so there's one of them, and I think I have like four different bamboos now in my yard. So we're going to see um, what this guy turns into. <laughs> um, let me show you the one that I planted last year. It's next to the ice cream bean here. So this guy, let me get through here. Uh, you know, this guy, when this guy puts out new leaves, I really just do think it's just so, so pretty. Um, there's nothing a gardener loves more than a fresh new uh, leaf that uh, their tree has put out. It's just, it's one of our, it's one of our things, right, that we love? Okay. So right next to it is um, the golden, um, a golden Buddha, I believe, or no, golden goddess, sorry. Golden goddess um, uh, bamboo. So you can see this, this foliage right here is the original from the pot and it's in its second year. So now the ones that are shooting out over up top are the second year um, uh, shoots. And then next year I'll probably get some more that are, you know, taller. So it's really fun to watch bamboo uh, grow. Let me get in under here. Uh, to grow because it grows so fast once it once it gets established um, It's just you know one of those fun things to actually see something grow uh, day to day You know we all just uh, kind of love that so we have um, the waterfall back here And all the guava and another ice cream bean um, There and another date palm. Well, I'll, here, let, I'll go here for a little bit and try not to get stabbed because it is very very dense through here and next to um you know all the guavas that are growing back here and but we can see the let's get through here sorry <laughs> um the pond is there which um you almost can't see it from this angle because i have to um i have to get in there and cut all the the cat um tails back right but um another date palm here and this is um one of the curry trees and this curry tree does amazing here it loves it absolutely just loves the hot weather so this is um, what it looks like from uh, this angle on my three day palms there and the china berry and the mulberry next to it. And again, our great big uh, leaves there that look brilliant in the, in the summer sun. Okay, let's try to work our way back through uh, this area now and take a look. I wanna show you guys um, the papaya, which is back here. Again, yeah, I don't remember having to do this last year, having to be so careful as I was walking through areas, but everything has definitely grown. Um, the papaya, now this is uh, the youngest one I have, and it's gonna try and bust through the trees, uh, this uh, mesquite that I have here. Um, we kind of just look at this, uh, this guava. So it's starting, when it gets resistance, like I'm gonna try and stand all the way back here. We can see this mesquite up here and it's trying to grow, but it's hitting the mesquite branches. So I'm gonna trim it back, and I need to, because it's bumping up against it, and it can feel it, and it's starting to put off, um, it's starting to put off all these little shoots. Hang on, I got ants on me. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's starting to put off all these little shoots. And this guy, if you can see what it would have done, it got the resistance from the mesquite last year, and when it started hitting um, the branches up there, Look at all the shoots that I have and I actually liked that that happened because What I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking these off the mother these shoots and Propagating them myself and rooting them out and get so I'm gonna I might do a video So I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna put root hormone on it and I'm gonna propagate them um, uh, And fill out this area because these trees only live for about five years and then they um, they die back so they're not a long living tree, but anyway, if I go to the very top, it's gonna to be kind of hard to see, but it busted through the trees and now it's starting to grow from the top again after uh, taking uh, like a year off just to put off a bunch of little pups for me, which worked out really great. Anyway, 
Uh, beside me here, going back here, is another uh, fig tree. Um, again, you know, I forget the varieties. You'll have to forgive me. I'd have to look at other videos to find out what all the varieties are of um, the things I have growing. Lemon tree. And this is how big my lemons are right now. This thing puts off, you know, hundreds of pounds of lemons every year. Everyone, you only ever, ever, ever need one lemon tree. <laughs> Uh, the fig that's beside here, um, the variety, you know, um, that has all the stripes on it. So many figs. I love figs so much, and we're getting into the fig season. I've been, I've been eating quite a few of them so far already. And this, this one is just so pretty with all the stripes on it. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, let's go back through the pond. We don't have to talk about everything. There, there's another little tiny fig tree that I had that I, uh, I had just moved actually last year because I didn't like the spot it was in. So it went into shock for a little bit. But now it's putting off new growth and it's getting happy. Um, let's, again, I have to back up. Uh, this is another uh, Pakistan mulberry, uh, the biggest Pakistan mulberry that I have in my yard. Um, and I did a lot of trimming to this guy too. And beside it, um, I probably showed you this last year. So we'll, let's talk about this guy for a little bit. This is um, sapote, a black sapote. And it almost died this winter <laughs> uh, in the cold. Uh, but the main uh, branch survived and now it just burst out. So <laughs> it, it survived the winter despite uh, dying back. But I think it's going to be okay for the, for the rest of the winters because you can kind of see if I zoom in here, the old, it's got a like, like its skin is now um, hardened and it's got mature bark. And if I go up the tree to the youngest part, this bark is just barely maturing. Can you, can you guys see those features? And so now it's a kind of a, a grown up tree. It's not an adolescent anymore, it's, uh, it's maturing. So I think uh, it'll survive the winters going uh, forward. Uh, a little experimental tree that I have back here. This is um, a Sazi Swirl Peach. It's in its second year. Um, we'll see how that guy does. It's just, you know, it's just a new little tree. My Jabba that I have here growing. Let's move along. Um, I, uh, I have been doing a lot of trimming. I trimmed this guy completely back. Uh, I trimmed off all the, this is a book leaf, Australian book leaf tree. So it's got really kind of, let me zoom in got really a cool leaf pattern on it but I trimmed it all the way back uh, this year and now I have um, it's gonna start getting all new growth on it and next to it kind of leaning in quite a bit as a, as a guava it's uh, kind of getting it's dropping its old leaves and it's putting off all new growth and it's still doing pretty good I've got uh, the figs another fig tree uh, I had a fig off this tree about a week ago best fig I've ever had <laughs> I, I took pictures of it even after I took a bite of it and I had to just share with you know anyone who was interested um, of that that fig it was amazing <laughs> okay and this tree this is kind of funny this big tree back here like I'll try to get out of the Sun this is a volunteer a volunteer but it's not even my volunteer you can see um, it's my neighbors it's just on their side of the fence so <laughs> it's just they, they thought it was my tree. I'm like, no, 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 this is your tree. I didn't plant that. And they didn't know it was a volunteer either because it's kind of hidden behind a bunch of other stuff there. So yeah, it got really big and I'm getting the benefits of it actually because it's shading out um, a, lot of, a lot of area now. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of the view of the yard, what it looks like. Like this is the view I have next to my house. So I walk out of my front door here um, and this is what I, this is what I see kind of looking out into my backyard. And that was, um, I think we covered a lot, you know, there's a lot going on back here, but let's, um, let's, let's do the front as well. So everyone, no yard is complete without a good laughing Buddha. And of course we're in Arizona, so we always need some cactuses. And this is just like kind of my like lounge area that I have uh, next to here. And of course what I've done there, that's just a pallet that I, I drill to the fence and this is kind of where I store a lot of my um, a lot of my garden tools in one area so let's move to the front here sorry I had to pause the, had to pause the video because I couldn't get in here so oh this is um so when I come out here this is the sapote there's got a, there's a lot of things 
lots of this is a white sapote and they are big and plentiful 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 like hundreds and hundreds of uh, sapotes off this tree so let me back up here I can see there so there's my gate when I go into one of the other gates of my yard um, it's getting pretty it's getting pretty full and those guys are getting big so and um, let's uh, let me just pause this and start at the very front Okay, so we're at the, the front of the yard here and um, I wanted to show you this first. So there's, you know, there's my car. I have grapevines growing on one side of my carport. Um, and this keeps my carport really nice and cool because, you know, this is a south facing um, part of my house. So the sun hits this almost all day long. So I kind of want to protect my car. It helps uh, keep that area nice and cool when I'm working in my carport for things. So I don't really grow these grapes for the grapes. Uh, I grow it because, well, it's kind of a nice, pretty vegetative wall, just growing some grapevines. And it keeps, uh, it keeps that whole area nice and cool for um, when I'm working, um, when I back out my car and I do projects in my carport. It's always, it, it always works great. So, I wanted to show you guys that. And uh, we have the wall of citrus here. Uh, this is the pink grapefruit. Uh, it's got new and old grapefruit on it, so I've got you know hundreds of more um, grapefruit growing, and I've got to pick um, the old grapefruit. Um, the tangerine is next to it, so these are this is the size of the baby tangerines right now, and of course I still have some on there from the previous harvest, and they're the ones that at the very very top that I can't reach, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a ladder and take those down. And if I get back here. And I show you um, how many grapefruit I still have left from last year's harvest here. Sorry, I'm not gonna get in here. Okay, if I'm underneath here, yeah, lots still that I do have to remove, but um, this grapefruit uh, really is a great provider of food for me. And I, as much as I eat, um, I still can't eat it all or give it away or anything, and I only have one, so I only need one. But it, let me back up here, get out of there. Okay. I have another um, right next to it. It's very crowded, but I do have another sapote uh, next to the wall of grapefruits. And I gotta barely get through here now. And we're gonna go around. This is um, a bay leaf tree uh, right beside the house. And it's, 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 you know, I think 10 feet tall now, that bay leaf tree. And um, right next to it, is the moringa and i know you guys are all you're all waiting for the moringa and it's coming guys like i've got lots and lots of moringa this uh this year it's almost a few more a few more weeks and it'll all be ready for you okay i know you guys some of you guys are really waiting some of these guys look how big this one is so good seeds um let me back up <laughs> i can't get through there let me back up for the moringa. I have my uh, walkway of moringa here, um, and it's just really beautiful just to kind of stand under here and and look at all the pods growing. Some of them are, you know, the early, you know, overachievers, you know, the new ones. But it puts and these are medium, and then right there, like I have a little baby. <laughs> so um, I'll get. I'm just gonna get a really good harvest of moringa this year. Um, and these trees grow back every single year so you can see I always show people you know um, where previous years where I've cut it and how much it grows back and it just keeps going so the most perfect tree I think that we can grow here in uh, in the desert let me back up so you guys can see how beautiful how beautiful it is and how beautiful the moringa is and just look at all the pods you have to just love that. It's so pretty, just going through all the pods. <laughs> um, let me see what else do I want to show you guys in front here. So there we go. Very tall. I grew that tall already this year. I cut that guy back to six feet, and that's how much it grew. Like, it just... So, like, now that's the ground, especially this big one back here. Look how thick that trunk is. I cut it all the way back and it grew all the way back every year. They're they're absolutely amazing. Um, oh, this guy next to it. This guy almost died this uh, winter too. And one of the harsh colds that we had, you know, this is a star fruit. 
but the trunk I and mean, you know how I feel about trees that die back and if you give them a chance they grow so this star fruit is coming back so we'll see uh, when I get my star fruit <laughs> and then uh, you know we have the, the Chinese date back here as well um, this guy puts off uh, lots of food for me it's got lots of fruit on it again this year absolutely love this guy and I did put a video out oh I gotta show you this so this is a, a volunteer that started growing in my neighbor's yard and they're not taking it out they said they're gonna leave it which is awesome so if you're my neighbor you just might get a free tree <laughs> because as you can see like no one really grows stuff here the yards are pretty empty and then and then we have mine <laughs> so moving on I don't have to go through absolutely every tree here there's just too many um, this is a, a pomegranate that I'm growing in the front yard now. This is the first year it's getting uh, pomegranates. Um, it's not very tall right now. It's kind of way down into a very flat looking bush. So I might stake it up and, and give it a helping hand here. Uh, this peach tree, or sorry, not peach tree, apricot tree gave me, I did a video of dehydrating all my apricots, a big apricot tree that gave me just, you know, hundreds of pounds of apricots. So gotta, you gotta love that one. And this guy I planted last year. Oh, look at all the butterflies on it. This guy I planted last year. Uh, looks like Cousin It. You know, this is uh, the, the passion fruit. Can you see the butterflies that are loving it? That are flying all around it. So, yeah, it's growing up and up and up. And I might have it grow up and over, but it's starting to hang on to the moringa there. So, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to take over. So, if the more trellis you give it, the, the more and more it'll grow and climb and hang on it's got all these little arms and it's just it's very happy and it's very healthy here um, and it's nice and cool at the front of my yard here okay guys I'm gonna end it with um, you know the beautiful beautiful look of all the moringa um, and the seeds are coming uh, check out the links in the description below if you want to know what products I use on my tree and my garden and um, everything I have growing on here um, and I am going to uh, give you a bonus at the end of this video. Thank you guys uh, for watching this long tour of my yard and uh, leave me um, your comments uh, below of other things that you want to see me spend more time on and feature here uh, in the yard and I will definitely try to make you guys some videos on, on that. Anyway, I just really appreciate everyone's support. Um, for me and my yard and I'm hoping I can uh, provide you guys with a lot more interesting stuff from it. So thanks guys.